In this video, we'll describe the calculation relationships between values of Kc and Kp. We described in the previous video that we use or include different substances for these. For Kc's, remember we can only use gas and aqueous. Those are the only two we measure concentrations of. For Kp's, we can only measure pressures of gases. Remember, for both of these, we never include solids or liquids, regardless of which type of equilibrium expression we're calculating, or equilibrium constant. However, because we use different substances, these two quantities will not be exactly equal to each other. We actually use our good old Pivnert equation from first semester chemistry to relate the two. So the answer is down here, but again, wanted to illustrate or explain the derivation, just so you can understand where it comes from. So realize, of course, we have pressure in here with the P. If I were to divide both sides through by V, then we have a relationship where pressure equals moles divided by volume times a quantity of RT. And recognize, of course, that moles over volume is the same as molarity. And so when we're looking at our equilibrium constants, we can say that the Kp is related to the Kc, the molarity or concentration, times a factor of Rt. And that product of Rt is raised to a, an exponent of delta N. The explanation for delta N is here. The delta, of course, is change. And any time we're doing change, we're doing final minus initial. So we're doing products minus reactants from our chemical equation. And again, because we either are given a Kp or are calculating a Kp, we're only including gaseous substances in our N value. And so it would be the moles of gaseous products minus moles of gaseous reactants. And when we say moles, we're simply looking at the coefficients in the balanced equation. So we're not going to be giving you a mass and asking you to convert to moles of each substance. We're simply just stating that the moles come from the coefficients. So again, we have this equation to use. The other key thing to recognize in here is our R constant. Because this equation is derived from the ideal gas law, we are using the 0 0.08206 quantity with these units, liter atmosphere per mole K. This is on your equation sheet for Chem 152. And a helpful hint for you, this is the only equation this semester that we'll use this R quantity. Every other time we use an R value, it's the other one that's listed in joules. So a practice problem, we're asked to write the Kp expression for this equation below. We recognize that each substance is a gas, so we're going to use all of them, or we'll include all of them in our expression. Remember that our notation for Kp's is stating the pressure of each substance. So the pressure of ammonia will be squared in the numerator. In the denominator, we have the pressure of hydrogen gas that's cubed and the pressure of nitrogen that is first order. So that is our expression. The next question that we're asked is to calculate the value of Kp at standard temperature. And now we are given at equilibrium pressures of each substance. So on the previous slide, I set up the Kp expression quick rewrite here for your review. Again, products over reactants and exponents are the, or coefficients are the exponents. And to solve for a value of Kp, we're just going to plug in the given values in this question. So ammonia has a value of 0 0.418. Remember that I am calculating an equilibrium constant, which means it's going to be unitless, so I don't have to include the unit in here. 
pressure of hydrogen is 0.104 and that will be cubed and the pressure of nitrogen is 0.554. So I'm choosing to leave my units out of my setup. Again, you're welcome to include them. Just remember uh, to cancel them out for your final answer. And we see here that we get a value of 280.337. For purposes of this class, I will accept a giant decimal here at the end of the number to indicate three sig figs. A better option and more accurate, and I try to avoid doing this, but a more accurate option would be to write this in scientific notation to ensure the three sig figs. If you somehow were to omit that decimal place, this would count as two sig figs and you would lose the points for that. So we have our KP value of 2.80 times 10 to the 2. Now our next question in the series, since we have a value of KP, we want to know what is KC at that same temperature. And so again, we're going to be using our equation. So we're already given temperature in Kelvin, which is perfect. If we were given temperature in Celsius, we need to convert to Kelvin. R, of course, is a constant, and we're asked to calculate Kc given a Kp. So the only thing that we need to determine before we plug in is our value of delta N. Remember, for delta N, we are looking at how many product gaseous substances we have, how many moles of product gas. We have two on the product side. On the reactant side, we have a total of three from hydrogen plus one from nitrogen. We have a total of four. And so realize our delta N is going to be a value of a negative two. So delta N can be positive or negative, depending on which side has more moles of gas. Now, in this equation, because we want to solve for Kc, I think it's actually easier to do that first and realize that when we manipulate this equation, we're going to be left with Kp divided by our Rt raised to the delta n. For my Kp value, I'm actually going to use my unrounded value. And for R, we do have the units in here, but realize that, of course, because I'm calculating a new K value, my units have to magically cancel. They won't always track through. Obviously, in this case, they don't track through. We just have to recognize that our K will come out to be a unitless quantity. So the other thing to note is our order of operations, that it's the product of our R times our T that is raised to the negative 2. That is in the denominator. And so pay attention to your order of operations. For my KC, rounding to three sig figs, I'm now going to write this one in scientific notation because it's large-ish. We get a 1.68 times 10 to the fifth. Again, three sig figs, and it is unitless. That is our Kc value. So recognize that Kp and Kc for a given equation do not have the same quantities. A thinking question I like to ask students is, there is a specific circumstance under which Kp will be equal to Kc for a given reaction. So think about the equation we have. How is it that Kp could be equal to Kc? Hopefully you recognize that it's actually dependent on our delta n value. If delta n were to be equal to zero, that would raise the entire RT quantity to zero, which means that would become a one, and then your Kc would equal to Kp. So this is true, and of course recognize that this is when 
the moles of product gases would have to be equal to the moles of reactant gas. So if we have the same number of moles of gas on both sides, your Kp will equal your Kc. And one more practice problem for you. I'll encourage you to practice this one, cover the answer again, and then confirm that you can get that answer with your setup.